So this is the last in the novice ceramic coating application series. One thing we all know is that what can go wrong will. So I've scoured the internet for the most common issues that even seasoned installers seem to have. And we're gonna cover multiple solutions for each of those issues today. Welcome back to another video, everybody. I hope you are all well. And so concludes the series. So to cover this video, I need to work on a number of assumptions. One, you have either watched the rest of the videos in this series. If you haven't, I highly recommend you do. I will link uh, the rest of the videos above. Or that you have already installed a ceramic coating to more than one vehicle. So I either need you to have some form of knowledge or pre-standing practical ability. Uh, and number two, that you have the ability to control your application environment to a degree, right? You don't need to be in a hermetically sealed, air-conditioned, temperature-controlled booth. But ideally, you know, we're not in the desert at dinner time, right? Controlled to a reasonable amount. Because in this video, we're going to cover the most common issues I could find online uh, that I believe are easily avoided by everyone and very easy to fix if you do cause them. So, in no particular order, So assuming that it isn't an inherently grabby product already, tip one would be to use more product. This is something that we have covered in other videos. Again, if you haven't watched them, link above, I highly recommend you do. But what is a ceramic coating? A ceramic coating is a bottle that contains solids that are being held in a liquid state. What are we doing when we apply a ceramic coating? We are aiming to apply as thick and even of a film as is possible onto the panel for us to later level it. Once applied, the things that are holding the solids in a liquid state are going to evaporate and then we are going to remove them. So not enough product creates an uneven application which creates grabbiness. The coating, the, the liquid that you pour out of the bottle, is the lubrication. Not enough product, not enough lubrication, grabby application. Uh, so tip two is to change your applicator type. Sometimes the smoother the applicator, the grabbier the application. It may seem contrary to logic, but if you can move from something like a suede, which is very, very smooth, to something like a microfiber applicator, you are reducing the surface area of which you are using to apply. Lower the surface area, the less contact between surface and applicator, therefore the smoother the application. And then lastly, again, something we have covered in the past, but if you can reduce the size of the applicator you are using, again, you reduce the size of the applicator, you reduce the size, the surface area of the applicator, you decrease the tension between applicator and paint. So my tip, we have covered this in other videos, is to cut your applicator in half lengthways and take it, let's say, from two inches thick to one inch thick. It's still the same length. You're still covering the same area when you apply it, but you have halved the surface area and thus, in theory, reduced the grabbiness, again, between applicator and paint. So 
So again, working on the assumption that it isn't an inherently grabby coating to remove in the first place. Tip one is to wait a little less time before removal. It's very likely that the removal is tacky because the coating that you are removing or leveling is over cured. You've waited too long and it's cured a little too much to get a successful easy wipe. So next time you put some on, reduce your wait time by let's say 30 seconds. Try again. If it's still a little tacky, but it's a little better, reduce again by another 30 seconds and just adjust to taste until it's a successful, nice, easy wipe off. The other thing I would say is, whilst timings are important, it's important to her that you observe the flash times. So always read the instructions, always read the manufacturer or the reseller's input, but do make your own observations. So regardless of whether you have a product that sweats or a product that rainbows, there will be a flash point and you should be able to see the change. Observe that, check against the timings that you are using or have written down. And again, just adjust to taste. As soon as you notice the flash point, let's get to removing. The other piece of advice I would give you, and this, it doesn't matter if the coating should be tacky or shouldn't be tacky, but if a coating is tacky or grabby to remove, do not use pressure. We shouldn't be using too much pressure anyway, but if you lean into it when you're trying to remove a product that is trying to fight against you, it just exacerbates the problems. It just makes the grabbiness work. You're trying to fight against it, it's trying to fight against you. You're, you're gonna lose, you're never going to win that battle. We are trying to level. We're just trying to level nice, nice and smooth. So don't scrub, level, just gentle wipes. Be methodical and kind. So we're gonna use a light touch. We're gonna to do nice, small, easy, even wipes. And we're gonna eat our apple a bite at a time. Again, if you've seen my other videos, you will know what I mean by that. We eat an apple a bite at a time. We remove coatings the same. Don't fight, don't scrub, don't stress. Just calm down. Nice, gentle wipes. Level the product, second cloth, third cloth. Softly, softly catch your monkey. Our ultimate goal is, of course, to apply a nice, even film. Furiously scrubbing and rubbing and attacking it is not going to achieve that. Eat the apple a bite at a time. Nice and smooth, nice and steady, no stress. Okay, so let's assume we have a difficult residue to remove. I'm being very intentional with my words there. By difficult to remove, I don't mean something that is fluid and mobile and you're pushing around the panel. I mean a residue that is difficult to easily buff clean and clear. It's a little bit opaque and you're having to work just a little bit harder than you should to get that perfectly clean gloss finish. There's a lot of things that can cause this or add up to the cause of this, but ultimately it all comes down to the fact that you are waiting too long to remove the coating. There are lots of things that can affect your timings when removing a coating. Temperature and humidity, for example, play a giant part in it. The hotter it is, the quicker a coating cures, 
and that's going to greatly affect your timings. So tip one, we started by assuming that you can control your application environment, but it may be that you can't control things like temperature. You're in a garage, but it's not air conditioned. Perhaps it's a metal roof, whatever the case may be. If it's just too warm to do it, knock it on the head. Do it later on in the day or earlier on in the day when it's cooler. Ideally earlier, because even though the weather will cool down later on, the place that you are working may stay very warm. So if you just can make the changes you need to make, the relevant things that you need to do, just stop. Start again the next day, get in early if you need to. Better to, better to have the inconvenience of having to work when you weren't supposed to or at a time you don't want to than doing a poor install. Knock it on the head, start again a different day. So now we've done that, tip two is to check your timings. The manufacturer should have provided you with some form of instruction, be it on the bottle or separately, and on there should be a guide to timings. Just check that against what you were doing. Maybe you were wrong. Maybe you had waited too long, you had a different number in mind. Just check your timings against the manufacturers. And once you've checked those timings, again, observe the flash points. Maybe the manufacturer says, wait five minutes. Your particular situation, maybe it's flashing at about three minutes. So you've got the five minutes in your mind. After four and a half, five minutes, you go and check, but you're already too late. So use the figures that you are given, but also use your eyes and use your senses. Look at the panel. Again, regardless of whether it, it rainbows or sweats, there will be a flash point. You should be able to observe it. Check that against what the manufacturer has given you. And again, if it's a little early, just remove it a little bit quicker. So tip two, and we've said it once today already, but less is not more with ceramic coatings. Maybe you're just being a bit tight and a little bit stingy. More product on the applicator, means more product on the panel. More product on the panel means a longer flash time and that will buy you some time before you need to go back and remove. If needs be, tip three is you could reduce your work area. Applying ceramic coatings is in theory no different to machine polishing with that respect. If you can't coat a whole panel and give yourself enough time to go back and remove the coating from the whole panel, then break it up into work areas. I did a machine polishing video in the past on passes, sets and work areas, but this does translate, as I said, to coatings as well. Might be worth you going and checking that out. I will leave a link above. The more work areas you have per panel, the quicker you are getting to removing each work area. And that just means that a lot less time goes by before removal. And lastly, try swapping out your applicator. It's a little bit left field this. It's something I stumbled on by accident and I've never really seen anybody else discussing it. But what I think happens is well, what we know happens is obviously eventually the coating inside the applicator is curing, it's, it's going off. But I think what can happen is even though the applicator might not be going hard or crispy, it is still curing internally. And every time you put extra product on and then apply it to the car, I think what could be happening is you are reintroducing already partially curing coating onto the panel. And so even though your timings are technically correct, you're still having issues with that clean removal. Just replace the applicator anyway. Applicators are cheap, be it microfiber or suede or makeup applicators, whatever you're using. Just try 
replacing it, you might be surprised. It's something I do regardless now, regardless of whether I, it, the applicator is going hard, regardless of you know whether I think that I'm starting to collect debris on it. I just, every couple of panels, I swap it out anyway, and I haven't had a problem since. So give that a try too. All right, so smeary residue. This is the exact opposite of what we've just covered. We're not talking about something that's difficult to remove. We're talking about something that doesn't seem to be curing, is staying fluid and is constantly moving around the panel. It's constantly being pushed to other areas rather than it appearing to remove or be leveled. The first thing to do is the same thing even though the problem is different it is check your timings maybe with this coating you're just too early maybe you need to exercise just a little bit of restraint and wait longer than you were expecting or longer than you are used to the answer is always refer to the instructions first second thing and i know we said earlier that we are working on the assumption that we can control our application environment but check your temperatures and check the advised temperatures by the manufacturer. Maybe the temperature is lower than the manufacturer would like for application and therefore the coating isn't actually curing and there's nothing you can actually do about that. Once you've checked those things, if everything is correct, then you obviously have a coating that is just simply smeary to remove. What now? Well, firstly, don't scrub. The more you scrub, the more you force the subject, the worse your, the worse your results will be. So once again, exercise some restraint. Give it another 30 seconds. Try again. Does it behave differently? Is it better? Is it worse? If not, stop wait another 30 seconds and try again. It may be with this coating that you just need to level it multiple times with multiple cloths. If that's the case, that's the case. What we need to do is not force the subject, not force the matter, not panic and not rush. Have multiple cloths and You know, if it's not one thing, it's the other, isn't it? Have multiple cloths to hand and don't forget the insurance cloth. Again, in the previous videos, we have discussed how important the insurance cloth is. Make sure you have that to hand. And for Christ's sake, don't use too much pressure. Once again, if we apply too much pressure, we're not leveling the product we're not creating a nice smooth surface and leaving the solids in place we're forcing and manipulating and moving the coating over the panel all that does is create an inconsistent film it's thick in some places it's thin as in others you're going to create a coating that fails unevenly and potentially performs differently across a panel it's super super important and i know i keep repeating myself but don't scrub just level just level and if it isn't coming off just wait and do some more of the same but don't panic <clears throat> okay now this is a popular one this is a really popular one this seems to crop up all the time okay whether we've had a difficult residue a smeary residue whether i don't know maybe your application went well but you unfortunately pushed some coating somewhere you shouldn't have and now you've got a high spot what if we leave behind some smears this is often an easy fix but it is time critical 
And the longer and longer you wait to try and fix it, the less and less effective it becomes. So tip one is to apply a heavy, wet application of the same product over the affected area. What we are hoping here is that the solvents that are in the coating that keep the, the solids in a liquid state, what we're hoping is that they will soften and loosen the smear that you have left. And then will be, that will be removed when we then pull it off. So tip one, heavy, wet application in the localized area. And tip two is remove quicker than you were before. Remove it whilst it is still wet. Heavy and wet application, wet removal. Hopefully the solvents will do the job for you. But because you are removing it when it's wet, it's super important that we don't repeat the same mistakes that we have obviously made previously and leave any residue anywhere else. So doubly, doubly sure that you haven't pushed anything where you don't want it and that you have overwiped past your application area with your insurance class to make sure that you have picked up everything up. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed that's going to work for you. If it doesn't, now we've got a high spot and the reality is we need to machine polish that off. My best tip here is either do it immediately or wait until the coating is fully cured. Don't mess about with that in-between period. This is, this is just the way I would tackle it if I had the problem. I would like to deal with it immediately whilst it is still soft and the surrounding coating is still soft. <clears throat> Polish it off, panel wipe it, do the whole thing again. You don't have to polish the whole area, but panel wipe the whole area, recoat the whole area. Or wait until it is fully cured, and again, polish what you need to do and wipe the whole area. But if you wait until it's partially cured, I think you're going to get an unstable or uneven film below you, and there is a chance that you will have issues on reapplication. So in an ideal world, deal with it as quick as you can. If you've missed it and we're a few hours behind, wait till the next day and deal with it then. That's my best tip for that. <clears throat> All right, so lastly, just some general things that I do see cropping up. Some of them you simply shouldn't be having if you have watched my other videos but still they do crop up crop up so let's cover them uh, one I will uh, refer to my phone because I just cannot remember all of these things um, okay so if you are adding marks into the paint when you are applying your coating so if you are creating little scratches Usually they're going to be straight lines and they're going to follow the pattern of application. You have some debris in either your applicator, your removal cloth or both. And that is probably going to have come from the bottle. It's probably a little shard of glass, some a small amount of cured coating that's accumulated there and dropped onto the applicator. So job one swap the applicator and the removal cloth immediately. Don't mess about, don't inspect them and try and figure out which one it is, just swap them. Just, just swap them, just get rid of them. Fresh applicator on your foam block, fresh primary cloth. Use that cloth that you have just thrown out to wipe the neck of the bottle. If you need to sort of get inside of the drop or whatever you've got to do, just 
make sure that that is super clean so that it isn't going to happen again. And again, if you have marked it, my opinion, deal with it immediately or wait till it's fully cured. But don't mess about in that in-between phase. Okay, high spots. If you are consistently getting high spots and, and high spots are areas of coating, very localized areas of coating that are cured and thick, shouldn't be there. They're usually very, very obvious. It's probably gonna be one of two things and they're fixed in different ways. So change your lighting. It might be if you're using direct light sources, it might not even be that you've not got enough lighting, but the direct nature of them could be making it hard for you to see uh, fresh coating and residue. So swap your lighting out for some diffused lighting. A diffu So even small like LED ceiling panels, you could rig those up with um, a plug top if you wanted to. Uh, I know some companies make like handheld, almost spotlights, but that are diffused. They show up high spots infinitely better than a direct light source. So swap out your lighting if you need to. And secondly, nothing to do with equipment and everything to do with how you are doing the job. But it might be that you are consistently and persistently pushing product onto adjacent panels. So let's say you're working on the wing. It might not be that you're leaving high spots on the wing, but you might be when you're when you're leveling, when you're removing the coating off the wing, you might be pushing coating, fresh coating onto the door or the bumper or maybe onto the bonnet. So one, obviously be mindful of what you're doing, where you're wiping. Two, make sure that once you've leveled the wing, you're going to follow up and wipe up doors and bumpers afterwards uh, with your second and insurance cloth, just to be doubly sure. And I always preach this, but if you can, get the obstructions out of the way. So maybe it's easy to avoid getting high spots on the bonnet because once you've done the bonnet, you lift the bonnet up out of the way. And now when you're leveling the wing, it's impossible to push the residue onto the bonnet because it isn't there to do it anymore. Sometimes you've got to think outside of the box. I preach this all the time. You've got to do what you've got to do to get the job done. Uh, if you have persistent smear issues, if you are, if you're coating, if if you've followed all of the things that we discussed before, your timings are right, the flash points are correct, it shouldn't be behaving the way it is. It's probably a cloth issue. Fresh cloth, box fresh every time, one and done, throw away and replace. I know that at the end of the year, if you're doing this professionally, it can add up, but cloths are cheaper than spending more time than you need to spend and they're definitely cheaper than having to redo jobs. So box fresh cloths, don't use cloths that you've washed. Don't try and wash cloths that you have used for a coating. And if you do, you know, because you're going to, I don't know, downgrade them to like tar removal cloths or something, make sure they stay separate from your other cloths. Only use box fresh cloths for your ceramic coating removal and ideally just bin them straight afterwards. Follow the three cloth rule primary cloth, secondary cloth, insurance cloth. And if, if everything else is equal, if your timings are right, you, you really, you should have no issues with smearing. And lastly, funny condensation patterns on panels that you have coated. This is something that has just come up on DW, Detailing World. Um, so, you can't see it, 
in um, direct light. You can't see it outside in sunlight. You can't see it under, you know, street lamps or in petrol stations or with inspection lamps. Everything looks fine on the face of it, but then the weather changes and you get mist in the air and condensation settles on the car and then all of a sudden you have these weird patterns in the condensation. It can happen with sealants and waxes as well. The problem is you have obviously left an inconsistent film on the vehicle. It's not a big problem because you can't see it when it really matters. But it's obviously there because you can see it when it's wet. That is caused during removal by not, it's not that you haven't thoroughly removed or leveled the coating, it's that you've been inconsistent probably with either your pressure or the amount of times that you have leveled the surface. So whilst it isn't inherently a problem, it is a teachable moment and it is, um, can't get mad, it might be work. It is a good time to reflect on what you do, how you do it, learn and potentially get better. So it's not a downside, it's actually a good thing. You get a little bit of feedback on your own car, heaven forbid, in this case, it was a customer's car. Like I say, it, it's not a big deal, but it's a teachable moment. It's something you can learn from. You improve as an installer, and that's all good. It's all gravy. We all get better. We all learn together. And that's about it. I know there's a million more. Those were the most common things that I could find, but maybe you've got something else. Maybe it's quirky. Maybe it happens all the time. Maybe you've seen it elsewhere. It didn't happen to you by all means, pop it in the comments below. Let's, maybe we do another video at another time, or maybe I just answer the questions in the comments. But again, let's all learn and grow together. So if I haven't covered something that happens to you, please, please mention it. I always try and get to every question that's put there um, in the end. This is, as previously stated, the last video in this series. Next series up is machine polishing, basics to machine, novice. Again, I'm, I'm trying to help novices. So this will be an, a novice machine polishing series. I've started planning it out. I've already started doing some B-roll for some of the videos. Reality is it's looking like it's gonna be another long one. Um, it look, it's looking like there might be up to about half, I'm trying to break it up into digestible chunks uh, and sub topics that make sense and flow together. Um, so please be patient, um, I'm on it. I will get it going as soon as possible. I will try and do a couple of videos so that there isn't so much time between them. Um, and then hopefully come spring or summer when everybody's tidying up the cars, you'll have a, a really good resource that you can refer to if you need to. Um, thanks once again for stopping by. Thanks for your time and your patience. I appreciate it. Uh, 2023, let's go, let's get it, let's do it. Uh, big plans, all that nonsense. Um, I truly appreciate, appreciate each and every one of you. I love you all. You're the best. I will see you on the next one. Thank you.